Are you recording this? Yeah, so what's uh what's what's the question there? It's about Tesla, huh? And you just want to hear my opinion on it? Well, I, we're in pretty I think we're pretty similar boats, wouldn't you think? We kind of bought in high and heavy last summer and yeah. We were kind of chasing chasing the, you know, yeah, DCA and down, yeah. keep, keep trying to keep up with it and, and 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 whatnot, and I guess the boat we're in is the boat we're in. Yep. But uh, just keeps on, just keeps on dropping. I just, just interested in knowing how you, what you think about it all. I, yeah. I haven't had a chance to listen to any of your shows, right? So yeah, let me let me log in uh, to Charles Schwab, mm -hmm. uh, and then I'll, I'll broadcast uh, the main concern. Um, all right, so. Here's a good thing. Sometimes, sometimes it's good to be so new to investment, you don't know what's going on, and therefore you're looking at it from a fresh set of eyes. Vices, you're talking to somebody who's been doing five, ten years. But essentially, it's it's really only two camps. Either you, uh, either you uh, believe in it or you don't believe in it. You know that that I guess that's probably a way to explain it. So. Because if you believe in something, you're gonna ride this. You're gonna ride this no matter what. And so, therefore, no matter what anyone say, it kind of it doesn't really matter. You know, it's kind of like you, it's like a shield. You create this artificial shield to protect you because that's what you believe. And if you don't believe in it, uh, if you don't believe in in what you're investing, then um, what happened is that. It doesn't matter what the fund is doing because it doesn't work anyway in your mind. So there's no way to explain that. So I try to be as logical as possible. Um, and so I, I ask, you know, the same one good thing that you that since since you've been with me from the very beginning, a lot of people been with me from the beginning is that I'm consistently the same high yield dividends uh, to generate cash flow income. All right. That is my core strategy, and that's what I believe in. All right, and and why what why do I do with cash flow and all that stuff? That's that's essentially you know all the other stuff in YouTube. You know, like for the community to advancement, people, society, and all that stuff. I irrelevant. The, the the relevant part is that uh, what do you do? You know, my core strategy. Did my core strategy change? You know, and I you know I as you all know. I go through this PowerPoint review every single month, and I always want to make sure that I'm still aligned or not aligned if I don't believe in. And just like Matt talked about, if if once your once your thesis change, then then you need to make changes drastic in in your investment start, uh, investment approach also. That's I, I believe that we both believe that. Uh, majority of us believe that. Uh, some people don't believe that. My thesis hasn't changed. Uh, and 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 what they have shown me is really not changed. But the part is, I don't have enough investment timeline. In other words, I haven't have enough experience in the market to understand to make the next step, the next the next question. Okay, I'm willing to I'm willing to ask all questions. All right. So my let's let's go back to my thesis. My thesis is you know high yield dividend to generate cash flow. So. Well, all dividends should dividends to generate cash flow, but firstly to go after high yield dividend, and and when you go after high yield dividends, there's elements of risk that come with that. Uh, the just like any investment is risk, but high yield dividends has has risk more risk. Um, but that apply that application apply to stocks and to certain elements of certain ETF, but does it apply to uh, income fund based on option trading. We don't know. We we I I I, I literally when somebody tell me they kind of know the answer, I can just say that's a theory. I can't even tell you that. I don't think I don't I, you know Jay maybe have the closest answer. Maybe people like Sylvia probably have the closest answer because this is what they do for a living. Uh, but it, it's hard. To, I, I I just cannot imagine somebody can predict something. A year out, two year out. That's like asking me, you know, are we going to win this war and we just start the war? You know, like everything tell me we're going to win it, no problem. But in OIF, you know, 
10, 20, 15 years later, we were still in it. You know, so we didn't win the war. So not 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 a, not a, not the time frame they told me when I was in it. You know, so so it, it's the same it's the same thing. So the question I ask is is you know we don't know the unknown part is the the option trading. That's what a lot of a lot of the people don't even bother to ask these questions. What they ask is Tesla, Tesla. And they talking about you know nav erosion. They talking about all these other mechanical stuff, but it's really to do with option trading. Uh, the, the the vehicle the vehicle that's in the the, the ship that's riding, uh, option trading. Can can a fund sustain uh, you know many volley of negativity over a long period of time? How does that affect the fund? How does that shape the fund? What does the future look like? Remember, the core thesis of my thesis is that income fund generate income. As long as they generate income, my thesis still remain. But once they no longer generate, generate income, then you have to question that. So, so the first litmus test that I, I point out is that we're specifically talking about Tesla here. We're not talking about anybody else. The first litmus test we're talking about uh, is... Is Tesla still generating income? Yes or no? I mean, it's really, a lot of time it's like that. You know, it's just yes or no. And if the answer is no, then then I need to re I need to full stop, reevaluate the process. That was the question I asked when Bitto was not doing that. Uh, so for those who don't remember this, I owned four funds when I started off. Uh, Tesla, OLK, Bitto, and Clip. Bitto went two months straight without paying any dividends. Well, they paid like 0 0.01 cents. And the, the, the conclusion, it doesn't really matter after that. I, I don't want to deal with it anymore because it doesn't, it doesn't do its purpose. Its purpose is to generate income, and it's not doing that. So as a result, I cut it. Uh, I, I, think I, I think I took a $200 loss. It's the only loss that I've taken uh, out of my portfolio. Other than that, I don't sell anything at a loss. I try not to sell anything at a loss. Uh, when I say loss, I'm talking about something over like $100 or something like that. And like, if I sell something like $3, uh, that's, not a, not, that's not a loss to me. All right. But, you know, so you, you ask these simple questions, does, does, you know, Tesla still paying uh, dividends? The answer is yes. So now it's the variable. The variable is, well, how much? Is it a lot? Is it less? Do you want more? Do you want less? And stuff like that. That's, that's subjective. That's, that's the individual. That's the player's choice. That's the tolerance level of you versus me and versus somebody else. Some people have very low tolerance. Some people have high tolerance. Um, you know, some people are okay to receive three months or 40 cents. Uh, my baseline is 40 cents. So why? Because if I can get... If I can get the same dollar amount, I, if I can get the same payments with Chep P, J E P I, with Chep Q, with Spy I, why do I need to buy or you know with C L M or C O F or S Vault? The thing of S Vault pay thirty cents, and S Vault you know if if I can get money, uh, if I can get the same dollar amount from somewhere else, I would just move to somewhere else, you know, or you know, so this way I don't have to deal with a lot of stuff. And then, um, so that's that, those are the questions I ask. But it hasn't gone below forty cents for me to even ask that question. It the, the the trigger has to happen in order for you to correct. One thing about military, you know, how how you teach young officer is when you teach enlisted marine is different how you teach officer. When you teach enlisted marines, you tell them exactly what to do, and then you do it over and over again repeatedly. And then until he mastered it, okay. But when you talk, when you teach a young officer, you give them a sandbox and you let them, you let them build the sandbox. But they have to do something. One of the element of being an officer is you have to do something. You have to make a decision. You can't teach. You can't. You can't judge him until he made that decision. And and there's no such thing as good or bad decision. It's just a decision. That's the same thing that I look at at Tesla. Tesla has has to do something to in order to trigger that that decision point so in a, we call it decision point and the decision point is it not paying fund not paying etf to me 
that is kind of like a very low ceiling, low bar uh, decision point. I wouldn't set a decision point down because this ETF core mission is generate income. They will always going to pay income. The question is how much. So if you put the ceiling is that if, if Tesla ever give me zero, therefore I'm not going to make any more decision, I'm not going to trigger any other condition, well, then, then you're setting yourself for failure for condition, condition logic. Uh, lo your logic flow is not going to fail. So, so you have to put something that, is, that can be broken, that can be reached, you know, and, and it's, it's obtainable. So there's got to be a happy medium. Um, if you put it too high, let's say 50 cents, obviously I would have, I would have sell out a Tisley a long time ago because it broke 50 cents many times. So you can't put, you can't, so you have to find out what balance. For me, the balance is this. Whatever, prior to Tesla, you have, to, I look at it this way, prior to Tesla, prior to Clip, prior to high yield dividends, what was the highest payment back then? That was Jeppy, J-E-P-I, pay 40 cents. And then, and then SVOL, TLTW, uh, 30 cents, you know, Bitto pay 40 cents, you know, 30 cents, you know. Um, I can't uh, just blank out a couple, you know, like CLM, you know, if you, if you double the number of CLM, essentially roughly 20, 30, 40 cents, you know. So, so when you look at XYLD, QYLD, and all those funds prior to, prior to Tesla, essentially 40 cents was the, was the threshold, like, if you go below 40 cents, you're in the 30 cents category, you might as well buy all those funds I just mentioned. But if you, if you stay about 40 cents, uh, you're essentially, you're looking at the top, uh, the top highest paying dividends during a time before yield max, okay? So that's, that's the threshold I'm looking at. I'm looking at it from that threshold. So 40 cents have become my arbitration number that I use. Um, for me to have some kind of trigger event for me to take a look. Okay, so the next question you should ask is what are those trigger events? What to do when those 40 cents? I haven't really, I haven't really digged down and deep, and that's why I start with the statement, if you're a believer, you're not gonna really ask a lot of questions because you believe in it. If you don't believe it, you're not even, this conversation only take place, you won't even buy Tesla because you don't believe in it. The problem with believer is that you, they tend to be blindly, just, they just blindly believe in their faith, you know, uh, and, and that's a very dangerous, as a military officer, if you hear an officer talk about something like that, it's very dangerous, uh, you know, like, I, I don't usually send guys into a mission to do something like that, that, that just totally, you know, have, uh, that just blindly leading into a fate of, of something, you know, because that's how you get yourself killed, you know, hopes and dream is great, uh, back in garrison, but hopes and dream is not something you execute in combat. It has to be It has to be more deliberate. It has to be more clear. So the question is, if it go below forty cents, what what are the condition? What are the situation that I can find myself in? Well, it go to forty cents. I have option now. the The option is that that I that this fund a it's not doing what it's supposed to do for me. Now, some people that their threshold may be thirty cents, twenty cents, whatever. They're happy when they get twenty cents, they, you know. But my threshold is forty cents, so number one, it doesn't do what it's supposed to do for me. So I need to reevaluate the entire system. Number two, at forty cents, uh, what is my alternate? What is my other alternate choice? And number three is that if I move it, what is my risk and what is my loss? And and then you, you put all those three together and you weighed out the, the options, you know, like, so those are the condition, but that condition does not meet until this condition meet. If it doesn't go, go, go below 40 cents, I'm comfortable. I am very, very comfortable with Tesla. I'm very comfortable looking at a $38,000 loss, 20% uh, of my portfolio. Uh, essentially, every time you see red, it, it's to do with Tesla and Tesla because, and TSLP because those are my biggest holding. Uh, essentially, if you remove Tesla and Tesla from my portfolio, I'm, I'm in the green. Um, but that, that is it, you know. So, you know, so you, you look at those, you look at, you know, one of those three factors and then just ask yourself those questions, you know. Let me pause for a second so this way, a dialogue doesn't make sense if I don't allow you to speak. So, go, go ahead.
and anybody want to jump in or uh, criticize my theory concept? And yeah, look, I'll jump into me. Yeah, um, I have a hard limit. If my position is down thirty percent, I'm out. Now, with Tesla, I've been managing that, and I'm down about. Oh, I can tell you, fifteen percent at the moment. Okay, it's the largest delta that I've seen um, since I invested in it. And what does that mean? It means I haven't bought any more shares recently. Now, I don't put fresh money into these. I don't put money out of my wallet into it. I put money out of dividends back into it, and that's all I do. Now, with Tesla, I'm only using the dividends I receive from Tesla to repurchase Tesla shares when I need to. If I don't need to use that money, it either sits in the account or I use it somewhere else. Okay, so my hard limit is 30%. Um, I get that people find Tesla trying, but you've got to remember it's based off the underlying Tesla. Now, uh, a couple of years ago, Tesla was 1200 bucks, um, which meant it was 410 bucks post split. Okay. And now we're down in the 160, 150, 160 mark. Um, there's only so much that yield max can do for this in this situation. It really is about the map. If you aren't comfortable putting some of your dividends back into Tesla, I don't like saying this, but it's true. You're better off not being in it. And does that mean you should sell at a loss? No. Does it mean... You should sell at a loss. No. Um, it may be a wait a little bit and see if you can get a better price. But then you have to factor in opportunity cost. By having that pile of money, however big or however small it is, whether it's $100 or $1,000 or a $1 million, um, what's the opportunity cost you get elsewhere? Could you put it in um, ETLY? Yes, it's paying a 65% dividend. Would you put it into MicroStrategy or Misty? Yes, it's paying God knows what right now. Um, I think it'll be huge this month, but that's just my thinking. Um, so you, we, in the beginning, there was no real choice. We only had a few funds to choose from. So it made sense that we were in Tesla. Now, most of us chose Tesla over ARK, and I'm still glad I did. Um, but I think ARC will come into its own too. And it should do in a rising AI tech market. And we are seeing the effects of this now. You know, um, OARC got lucky that it didn't have the same downside delta that Tesla does. And why is that? It's because of the high IV. Um, I, I don't know what else to say. I, I, I can't say anything that will make you feel better about your position or um, give you the right decision for you. I can't do that. Yeah. Um, no, I, I totally, you, Matt, you and I are on the same page, but this is here yeah. to help answer Jimmy's question. He just want to hear my thoughts. Yeah. I'm, I'm about to go into theory and, and, and what to do next, like what I would do. Yeah, okay. Okay, you, so you do that, and, yeah. and then I might chip in a bit later on too. Yeah. So Jimmy, um, first of all, do you understand like everything I was talking up to this point? Uh, you, you, I. Let me stop there. Jimmy, you, can you hear us? Yeah, just the audio is really choppy. It's on my end. Okay. I don't know what it is, but it's really choppy. But. No, I'm not asking. I'm not asking you what what you're going. To, just wanted to know what your thoughts were on it because I I had so many shares, maybe probably about three thousand, and I stopped, and then I started to diversify. Yeah. And then, like as the, as it went down, I DCA down as well, yep. which was like I said, it was a losing battle because it kept going down. But I also bought in more because I still believed in. I still believed it would turn around and the opportunity yeah. that's there. So right now, what I'm doing is I'm I'm leaving it as it is. Uh, it's like a, like I'm down like I'm down share price. I'm down like you know 45 yeah. percent or whatever. Like, well, I, I'm not. You know what? 
I get more kind of, uh, I don't know, like stressed from it all. Just so many things, just trying to learn everything at once more. So I think I kind of, we had a great, some great, Jimmy, are like, you, great feedback from, from Matt and from, yeah. and, and from uh, Mike yesterday and stuff. Are you but, from like, Australia? Are you, are, not, what? are you from Australia? Who, me? Yeah, yeah. No, no. No, I'm from Newfoundland, Canada. Ah, okay, okay. Yeah. You, you have that. But, uh, yeah. Wow, that's a Canadian accent? Wow, that's pretty pretty cool. My God, are you trying to tell me I sound as sexy as Matt? Uh, you, 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 I, 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 you know what? I, I have no idea. I, I couldn't. Have, well, I knew you, I knew you from Newfoundland, but for some, yeah. you know, I, but it's just, it's just that maybe because your accent is like, it, it, I, I guess I never heard of Newfoundland speak. And uh, it, you have that Ryan Reynolds thing going on, dude. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jimmy, so, like, right now, I, like, I, you know what? The, the Tesla, it is, it is what it is. But yeah. like, uh, yeah. of all the people that, well, I, I just thought our, our paths were pretty similar, yeah. and how we bought into it. Yeah. And so, right now, but, but like, I didn't I'm, sell I'm my kidney. Though. You stuff. sold your kidney. You you sold your kidney. Sure. I, <laughs> I didn't sell my kidney. That's an inside joke <laughs> for those out there. I I tease Jimmy all the time because he sold his kidney. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you you have so, a, yeah, um, uh, yeah. I, 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 I don't have a kidney, so I'm hoping someone's out there that can donate one of. Yeah. That'd be great as well in the meantime, right? <laughs> well, let me, but uh, let me yeah, keep... like I'm down, but uh, like yeah. I'm just kind of holding my ground on it. And uh, like I said, I just, I just wanted to know what your thoughts were. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll give you, I'll give you another. You're down as well, right? I'll give you another th thing. So this is why I'm, I'm just, I'm going to tell you how I, I'm going to play it, and and. And I have no problem. I'm comfortable with this. Okay. So first, let's theorize this. Um, and my main thesis is that that there's a couple of things that you have to have faith in. Th these are the miracle that are required to understand. You have to understand. You have to have the belief that Tesla is gonna go two x or three x from this current situation. I, I don't. I don't know about going four thousand or five thousand. You know, like like Kathy Wood say, because I, I don't know enough about the market for me. But can can it double? Can it double its current situation? Can it go three hundred, uh, in in by the summertime? You know, like for example, can it go? Can it go beyond three hundred by the end of the year? I believe so. Um, I believe so. I'm just doing small chunk. I mean, I'm not talking about a thousand dollar share like Nvidia or eight hundred, five hundred share. I'm talking about just can it go and break three hundred by sometime at the end of this year? I believe it can. The next earning report is going to be a much more positive report, I believe. Um, and then, matter of fact, it, all report has been positive. It's just crazy how people interpret it. Um, and and so I think what happened is once products and lines come out, uh, the frenzy kick in. It, it feel like the, the storm. Uh, I was not a stock owner, but I was a Tesla owner when I bought my Model 3 when it broke the 2001, when it, when it just went. Because I it just it just exploded. Okay, so I I've seen how the frenzy was. That frenzy is going to happen the same thing when the Model Three is reachable by average consumer, like people like me. Right now, or not not Model Three. I'm talking about the Cyber Truck. The Cyber Truck is not reachable by consumer. Once once I have a a, a ticket numbers, uh, you're going to see it speed up even more because then you're going to have the average show making YouTube video. You're gonna see the average Joe talking about it, the the neighbors talking about the friend. When I when I bought my Model Three, and I drove that thing from from uh, uh, I bought it in Virginia because I was stationed uh, I was stationed in in Quantico during the time, and then I'm driving all the way down to Miami, right? And I'll tell you, every time I stop, every time I stop, it's literally like it's it. I I feel like I was driving a Lamborghini. Um, and it, it was like the it was like the, the most amazing thing. My girl and I we were just sitting there talking, and every single stop, somebody asked us question about the Tesla car. They have an opinions on it. I mean, sometimes our charging it, it take more than more than an hour because it's not because of the charging because people were asking us questions and we were just having conversation. And then when you meet other other Tesla driver other Tesla cars. And we're having this, you know, just unbelievable conversation. It is a game changer. People who don't have faith in Tesla, in my opinion, has not drive a Tesla Model 3 
or Tesla car, period. If they do and they still have a negative opinion, then I say that person is extremely biased, extremely biased, and that person shouldn't be driving anywhere. Because I didn't know anything about, you have to learn how to drive. It's not like a normal car. Like I made my first video on a Tesla when I drove out of the car, out of the dealership, I had to like reprogram how to drive a car. It was crazy. I mean, yeah, left, right, turn, steering wheel is the same, but the acceleration, deceleration, all those things is different. So, uh, and then when you use the auto cruise and autopilot and stuff like that, holy cow, you have to like return it. So you have to believe in the products. And when I when I drove when I drove that car, I knew that I knew the I knew Tesla stock's gonna reach a thousand dollar. Like I knew it. Like, like this thing is gonna go. And of course, it went up, you know, right after that. And uh, and we were talking about it. So, I, I'm not a, I don't know what a bull or a, a, a fanboy of Tesla. I'm just being realistic. Like there is no other cars out there is comparable. Not even close to it. And this car is getting cheaper. So what's gonna happen is when you have you know, all my friends, you know, the, all the Asian boys out there, but instead of buying Honda Civics, they're buying Tesla and they start modifying, they're putting po spoiler on or putting some wheels and whatever, and they just make it cool and sexy. And and once you get that, that whole genre, that's one of the reasons why Honda is so popular. Like, like, why do people keep buying Honda? Because there's millions of people decorating this thing. Like millions of teenager, not teenager, but in their 20s, you know, decorating this thing. A lot of, a lot of, that it's affordable at the college kids level, you know, it's affordable at twenty something years old level. Um, I own a Honda for long, I, I, right after high school, after college. I mean, I own Honda, right? You know, all through my military, I own. I love Hondas. I I think about you know, I date girls driving Hondas. I mean, like crazy. Most people because it it works, it works, and and that's what's gonna happen with Tesla. I I went on too too long of a subject on Tesla. So the point. The point is, if you don't believe in Tesla that it's going to 3x or 5x by the end of the year, th uh, then then it doesn't really matter because everything else after this conversation is going to be mute point. Okay, so that's the first part. The second part is you have to understand, not believe, you have to understand how option trading works. You have to understand how t yield max generate income. And, is, and once you understand how yield max generate income, you're not going to worry about the stock price anymore. That's, to me, that's, like, I don't understand how, how an immigrant like me who had no experience is explaining this to, like, to, like, a lot of people who doesn't understand it because they always talk about nav erosion. They talk about the, the devaluing. They talk about things coming down. You have to understand how, like, once, once Claude and Kenny and all those guys showed me how to do option trading, I didn't, I didn't need, I, I, I understood quickly how Tesla, why Tesla is so beautiful. Because here is my theory on it. My theory on it. Tesla is going to be around for a long, long, long time. And, and, and we may go through this cycles, and matter of fact, the reverse split may, may happen two or three times within this lifespan of Tesla. It... And, and, and what's going to happen is a couple of things going to happen. Uh, I think Jay going to do one or two things. You know, um, if if he doesn't want to go through the reverse split again or whatever, it's up to him. It's, it's up to him. But it doesn't really matter because one or two things he's going to have to modify his, 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 his style. Number one, he has to go out of the money further out. A good example like TSLP TSLP is further out of the money, but they, they don't lose a lot of share value. They don't, you know? And, but the problem is you're not gonna get, you're not gonna get this, the yield. So you're not gonna get the yield, you're not gonna get the dividend. So that's, these are the decision points they have to make. What is important to them? What is important? Generate yield or protecting the price? And my theory is that they're not protecting the price, just like he said it. I don't think he ever said the other way. I have never heard him say it the other way. He always said, we're not protecting the price, we're going after the yield. We're not protecting the price, we're going after the yield. We're going after the premium. And, and as a result, he's speaking my language. He is speaking to me. Generating income, sole purpose, and I believe in it. 
And I think, I think in, uh, in, in my theory, Tesla is going to be around a long, long time. It's going to be around for a while. What's going to happen is Tesla is going to come back up when it hit $300, $400 stocks. When, to me, it's the $400. Once it hit $300, going to $400, Tesla, Tesla and Tesla is going to explode. It's it, like the, the, and a lot of people are like, well, you know, this, this thing's not going to come up. No, it, it, we just need a run. We just need a good run. It has come up many times. It will come up, and it just need a run. That's all it is. And that's why I'm not worried about it. Once Tesla come back up, this conversation, this red that you see here, it's not going to be a factor. Matter of fact, it's going to be the opposite. There's going to be people talking about, like, man, I wish I owned Tesla at such a cheap price. I wish I have 3,000 shares of Tesla. I wish I have... Uh, just like people talking about NVIDIA right now. I, I wish I have a lot of share of NVIDIA. Well, you could have bought NVIDIA when it was $20, but you chose not to. You could have bought Tesla at $166. You could have bought Tesla at $135. You could have bought Tesla at $25, but you chose not to. You could have bought all kinds of stuff, but you chose not to. So it's, it's a choice that people made. And we are, I believe we're on the right track. We are heading as a, okay. But that doesn't, doesn't put a lot of you at ease because a lot of you are new and you're kind of like, well, this doesn't make me happy. Well, here's, here's, something, here's something to consider, another factor. You don't have to mess with income fund. Like income fund is literally, it buys something and generate income and just walk away. Now, I prefer active trading because that's what I like to do. But you don't have to touch it. It, I the one wish I have right now, but they're not they're not gonna deploy me. I mean, I'm I'm facing I'm I'm about to leave the military. So, but man, I put my name on the list in a heartbeat, man. I'm uh, I'm like, put me on a ship somewhere for for exactly nine months. <laughs> I will go away. I won't do any trading. Of course, I can't because I'm on a ship somewhere, and I come back and Tesla's gonna be fine. Tesla's gonna be fine, and my fun will be amazing because one, my margin will be paid off and and then I will have so much more money because I'm not touching my money. Because right now I'm touching my money. Every time I get paid my dividends, I'm constantly touching it. Uh, like like the rule of acne, stop playing with your acne. You know, <laughs> like if you wanna have a beautiful face, stop playing with your acne. And uh, and this is the same thing here. Stop, stop messing with it, you know, Try to get to a number of shares, whatever the share that you're comfortable with. For me, it was $3,000. I am I am comfortable getting to $3,000 with my Tesla. I'm comfortable getting to $3,000 uh, on my share. That's 80, 80 when, when Tesla pay 40 cents, I should get $3,000. I'm very comfortable with it. And um, just like it's right now, 81 cents, I get $3,000, okay? Exactly the way I want it. And, um, and I don't have to touch it anymore. So what do you do with that dividend? Well, you can use it on whatever. Grow some other fund, grow whatever. And you can walk away. And, and eventually you're gonna get all your money back because Tesla's not gonna fail, option trade is not gonna fail. That is the key part. Is those two are not gonna fail. So as a result, don't worry about all these other stuff. Uh, it, it, I don't know how to explain it any, any easier than that. Um, but obviously, it's your money. You know, you do you do you, and you you know not you, Jimmy, but whoever's out there listening, you you guys do whatever you want to do. I think you, Jimmy, and I, we're on the long ride. We're gonna ride this through, and we're gonna be fine. All right. Uh, with that, uh, I think Matt want to say something, or yeah, I do actually, buddy. Yeah. Here's the thing, and and we all get worried about the share price. Okay. All of us. I don't think there's any one exact. We, we look at it, and right now it's sitting at fourteen dollars seventy after being at nineteen bucks. Yeah. Okay. So it's come down a long way in a short period of time. Um, I look at that, and I I, I pause and, and second guess myself, and I did that a couple of few weeks ago. And and here's the thing I came up with: while it's paying a decent dividend. And let's call it 50% plus. I'm in this. Okay. But my position is a little more new, unique than most. I have a really good yield on cost. So if it pays 30% for a couple of months, is it going to worry me? No. 
I am in the unique position, and I think Camille is getting there too, where the dividends have just about paid for our um, buy-in when we originally purchased. You know, I'm two, maybe three months away from that. And then I'm playing with house money. I could take my money out of it over time and and, and just be left with 100% profit. And my yield on cost, in essence, would be infinity. I'm not saying it this way to make you love the stock anymore or hate it anymore or love it any less or anything like that. It, for me, and I keep going back to this, it's just how the math speaks to me. Now, as I said before, if 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 I get to a point where I'm not happy to put any more dividends back into it, and I go over thirty percent as a loss, um, and that's not including dividends, so I'm still in profit. Um, I'm out. Like it, it, it like. I can make more money in other things. I can do that now. But I like Tesla. And I like Tesla because it's the underdog. I like Tesla because it's the underdog. It will always go through tough times. If you have a look at the history of this stock from, from when it's listed and until today, it's run up 700% in 2020, 2021. It's dropped 70% in the last 12 months. Um, it's just the way the stock is. Would I have preferred they didn't do Tesla up front? Yes. But nobody knew that the stock was going to drop by 70% in the first 12 or 14 months. You know, it's that simple. My gut feeling is if you write it out, you'll be rewarded in the long term. And why do I say gut feeling and not the math? It's because the math hasn't happened yet. Like if, here's the thing, if, if you hold your position, and it increases 50 percent and and you're only down now 25 percent if it does it again you're back to even so tesla only has to go to 400 for you to do that in essence just depending on you know as a rule of thumb i did the math the other day on how much of the upside that we are gaining on a couple of pairs and i used microstrategy and misty and coin and coinbase because i bought them at the same time um coin and coinbase is getting about 50 percent of the upside and um, microstrategy and misty is getting about 60 percent of the upside if tesla takes gets half of that so it's at you know that 25 30 percent i think that's a good rule of thumb to use particularly in the market that we were in for Tesla. There's nothing that's changed in the underlying stock of Tesla. They haven't had any setbacks apart from that shit that happened in Berlin. And that's over with now. They're back to producing cars again. So this is all market psychology. And everybody is being head faked. And when I say everybody, I mean the majority is being head faked. I've seen some really bullish Tesla bulls sell their positions, which I think is crazy. I really do. Because while they haven't taken a loss, they haven't made as much as they should have. Now, you've got a lot of weighing up to do. Um, we can't make the decision for you. We can just tell you how we feel and, and how we look at it and, and all that sort of stuff. And I'm probably not making your thoughts any better. Um, but if you feel that it's not for you, it's not a sin to sell out of it, at, even at a loss. As long as you've got something better in mind and the opportunity cost is there to recover what you've lost, even if it takes some months, six months, whatever, it doesn't matter. You know, th there's no shame in that. If you've made a bad call for you, you've made a bad call for you and, and sometimes you're better off cutting that loss and, and moving on. But if you really do believe in the underlying, and in this case, Tesla, hold your course. Get nerves of steel. That's all I can say, buddy. Like, I'm here if you ever want to talk about it. You know that. But I, I, I can't... Yeah, I, I, I can't put words in your mouth and I can't make the decision for you. This, is, this has got to be from you. This is the part... Um, 
of investing that really is soul searching as to what you may do. Thanks to me. Yeah, no, I appreciate it. So uh, and, and anybody else want to chime in? Uh, I'm going to stop the recording here. I got to get transitioned to the live show. So uh, I'm going to stop the recording. Anybody want to jump in, uh, say something for this particular recording? I just wanted to, yeah, I just wanted to say um, that a uh, couple of weeks ago, uh, Jay, Jay Leno's Garage did the video for uh, the new model Tesla that's coming out. Mm -hmm. And it's $40,000, so it's the price of a Prius now. And, you know, it's a hybrid, so it's already getting cheaper. And the build quality is better. No, it's even cheaper than that because you got the. Uh, I I I think I saw someone say, uh, with the uh, tax incentive or stuff in California, you have an additional tax incentive. Uh, so it was like, it come. I forgot what the number was like thirty something. It was like low thirty. Come here. Yeah. In some parts of the U.S. at the moment, you can buy a Model 3 standard for less than $24,000 out of your own pocket. That's yeah, crazy. That's, that's crazy. That's that's where it's going to explode. It, it's going to take time because, because you understand, here's the beauty of the marketing. I saw a YouTube video. Uh, somebody made a YouTube video, and this is not an investment channel. It's like a car company, a car, car YouTube channel. And he was he was talking about that. What Tesla has to do is they have to essentially teach their buyer. They have to teach the buyer because it's 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 a total different mindset. Because remember, most car most car buyer is this: uh, my father drive a Ford, therefore you drive a Ford, and your grandkids will drive a Ford. You should essentially be a Ford. You go from you go for a Ford F-150, and and now you're driving a Ford F-150. <laughs> it's like crazy. And and the concept of just buying an electric car, it's just a little bit out of the realm. And especially when it's more expensive, it's really out of the realm. It's like it's just out of this world for, for a lot of people. But I want, if you look at, and he made a case that this YouTube video made a case. If you look at all the YouTube, all the Tesla commercial, not, not, not commercial, but like, their spokesperson, every time Elon talk, every time somebody talk about Tesla, now they're talking from a price point, a, a price entry point. Uh, and before they were talking about Tesla, you know, the, the gimmicks, you know, the electronics, the, you know, the beauty of the, the car itself. They talk about the car, the, the merchandises, but now they're talking about price point, which is essentially that's Toyota speak, that's Honda speak. It's always been the price point. And, um, and they, you know, they, they're like, hey, there's some there's some good American made car, but our car is pretty cheap, you know, and um, I, I think, yeah, there's there's a lot of cases like that where uh, their, their strategy, marketing strategy, is shifting to bring masses, uh, you know, this vehicle to the mass, and when that happens, it's gonna explode even more. It's like a next next tier, next layer, of of uh, market group, you know. Does, does that the uh, semi truck is already being used? Yeah. Well, not not in masses. No, I mean, that's that's no, the key. not in masses, but but I believe it. I believe Tesla's using it for their cars, so it's out there. Yeah. Tesla trucks are being used by usually the delivery from like warehouse to the storefront yeah. or to the but it's getting there. Uh, I would like to add something where you get the pants. Yeah. Okay. All right, guys. So uh, I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna stop here. Uh, I'm just stopping the recording because I gotta. I got it's uh, so I can transition.